Okay, then we are proceeding with session number three uh, with a general title, How can rural resources and cultural heritage be enhanced? Comment valoriser les ressources rurales et les patrimoines culturels? This is uh, particularly interesting for us uh, as uh, Time Heritage is a little company focusing on cultural heritage projects, and we are really looking forward uh, to listening to both presenters, uh, Catherine, starting with Catherine Goodwin uh, from uh, the University of Clermont Auvergne. Her uh, title is The Artistic Production of Space in Rural Peripheral Areas, Site-Specific Art and the Mise en Art of Nature in France and the United Kingdom. So, hello, thank you so much for trying to share my screen. So uh, again, thank you very much for this introduction. Um, my name is Catherine and I am the MSD today. period with the research program Adona. It's for a set of nature archival peripheries at UMR Passage. So I participated uh, in this project during my master's program in geography at Bordeaux. And the research that will be discussed here deals with the phenomenon of site-specific art in global rural peripheries as to the role of art in shaping and constructing new places and notions of territorial identity. So some of the crit critical questions here concern how and why these programs are emerging in rural areas and what are the social, territorial, political, and economic consequences. So how does this have an impact on the culture we are producing and our perceptions and understanding of place? So, so, so you today is just the field work and the research conducted over this two year internship period and some of the, the analysis and hypotheses drawn from this experience. So in the first instance, I will just provide a art in order to better understand why is the art form described was meant by the artistic production of space and introduce the program in Dona. Uh, so in the second part of this presentation, um, this will concern the findings and analysis of the research materials. In the first part, I will focus on providing a brief overview of the development of contemporary art in protected areas. And then the second part, we will look at the artistic production of space and the three themes that were seen as integral to this process. So this included the guiding motivations, the mediation technique, and public perceptions. And then we have a brief discussion about three of the main uh, themes and research questions that were brought up uh, during this internship. So. The artworks studied for this project are site-specific, which means that they are specifically designed for and influenced by the place in which they are created. So there's a close interaction between the setting and the art, with each, each giving meaning to and influencing the other. And creating a connection with the place is very important here. So there was a determined effort in all of these projects that the art parle avec l'environnement dans lequel il est installé. So here you can have the full quote by uh, Veronique Perez, um, showing that it's very important for them to, to create artworks um, that are linked to place. So this artistic practice is important when considering the art, or when considering the process behind the artistic production of space. Uh, this is a process grounded in space and time, and it's centered around the creation of a site-specific site artwork and all of the social and territorial action interactions this entails. So um, many people have talked about art's capacity to change places both physically and mentally. And so the goal here is to examine the process behind this transformation. So we're asking basically if art has the power to create certain representations of the natural environment, then we can ask how, where, why, when, and with whom these representations are created. And then we can also look at how these dynamics evolve over time. So these two diagrams provide visual representation of the process, um, demonstrating the ongoing physical and perceptual impacts of this activity. Um, so this first diagram 
um, addresses the physical, so uh, the physical interactions that the artist can have on the site, as well as the perceptual impacts that this can have. And then, and then this diagram kind of outlines all of the potential publics involved in this process. Um, so the aim of the research program Adona is to examine the worldwide phenomenon of the artistic production of space and all of the territorial, social, political um, consequences of this process. So we are looking at uh, site-specific art programs on a global scale and trying to understand their consequences. Um, so uh, as these programs are happening in rural areas, which are places that are oftentimes characterized as fragile in terms of economic development, population density, and the environment, um, and a site-specific art can be used to, um, to address all of these problems. Um, some of the more critical questions of this research concern if and how art is politicizing spaces in rural areas, or if it is being used as a way to depoliticize space, amass some uh, uncomfortable economic, political, social, and environment re environmental reality. Critical questions concern um, um, by, by presence in rural areas or to advance certain political goals or is it um is it kind of a more part of more bottom-up process that allows people to experiment with new ways of being together in rural areas so um there are many ways to explore these dynamics and the goal of the research research internship that i did was very exploratory and it was to further research this action of space and the Grisdale Forest District National Parks. And six case studies were also chosen for this research, one located in the three fieldwork sites. Um, so in today's presentation, I will just be focusing on three um, of the sites. So La Forêt d'Art Contemporain, uh, La Ligne de Partage des Eaux, and the, the sixth one, uh, um, as these are world of contemporary art. So to involved um, qualitative math and um, which included uh, a literature review in the first type of, of Satan uh, of and it also included participant work and interviews. So each site I spent a month um, on each site. So in Pinar and Gasconia, one month in Ardash and another month at the Grisdale Forest Sculpture Program. And the questions um, that I was trying to answer were, uh, what are the contextual elements that led to the development of contemporary art in rural peripheral areas? Um, so what are some of the origins of these programs and the guiding motivations? And then how do these programs fit into an overall territorial dynamic? Um, how do they function? Um, what are kind of the territorial mediation techniques? And then what are the public perceptions? Um, so out of the six case studies, um, as I explained, three were three were chosen. Um, and it was in a general sense, it was found that the overall development and motivations for pursuing contemporary art uh, fell into four main categories. And these categories were landscape, um, so appreciation and valorization of the landscape and territory and changing territorial image. Um, another uh, main reason for consumer cons pursuing this activity was related to culture and um, the economy, so generating a certain tourism or economic development, and also art, uh, so developing the artistic practice um, and using ar artists as researchers um, to, to provide a different territorial perspective um, and also concerning questions of heritage and, and, and other activities. Um, so these four themes were found to a greater or less extent involve the program study. Um, however, the historical, social, political, and economic context of each site um, and the origins behind the program influenced these, the ways that um, that art was used. So the first site that I will talk about um, is uh, La Forêt d'Art Contemporaine in the Pinar de Land de Gasconia. Uh, so uh, La Forêt d'Art Contemporaine was created in 2011 um, and was um, 
the was created in the wake of Storm Klaus in 2009, which was a European windstorm that swept through northern Spain and southern France and caused severe damage throughout all the territory and wiped out 80% um, of the land uh, forest. So the storm marked a major change in territorial dynamics on an economic scale and also on a social and personal level um, because people now no longer recognize the landscape in which they were living. So prior to this event, uh, there were several groups in the area that were already engaged with contemporary art. Um, most notably, three associations. Um, their names were Opre de Monarbre, Le Flor Hilly de Garhan, and Lico Musée de Marquez. So, people in the territory were kind of already sensitized this idea of contemporary art uh, as a way to bring, a, bring about a new share, shared cultural activity. So after the new after the 2009 storm, residents saw art as a potential way to address questions of loss, memory, and the social changes that had taken place in the territory. Uh, so two associations came together uh, along with the park to create La Forêt d'Art Contemporaine, hoping that in working together they could instill a new dynamic, uh, a new activity across the territory of the park. Um, so art here was very much used to kind of deal with, uh, create a new territorial image and territorial identity, um, but also, and most importantly, deal with um, this question of, of memory and, and, and loss and trying to kind of grapple with um, how to deal with change in the territory. Um, so this is one of the art, well, these are two of the artworks and um, this one of the table kind of represents uh, the storm and, um, kind of the falling over of the trees. Um, so yes, yeah, so this program was very much linked to kind of memory of space. Uh, so um, the development of contemporary art in Montardesh, it started on a smaller scale um, with residents and associations in the, in the territory. Um, but the park's desire to engage with contemporary art um, was more out of a want to create a culture around art in places uh, where this was not highly accessible or visible. So um, the Director of Cultural Heritage Activities and Services at the PNR uh, stated that contemporary art was a difficult subject for the park, but when they felt it was necessary to address because uh, chez nous, il n'y avait pas de lieu, il n'y avait pas une galerie d'art, il n'y avait pas un centre d'art, il n'y avait pas un musée d'art, c'était le désert. So in the early 2000s, the PNR Federation, in particular the network of cultural ambassadors, started to work together on the subject of contemporary art in rural communities. And in 2017, the PNR Montardesh launched its own project, uh, La Ligne de Partage des Eaux, to help bring in a certain culture and economy and access to contemporary art in more um, economically fragile areas. Um, so this was seen as a way to kind of um, get uh, uh, to reinvigorate um, communities in this part of the park um, uh, and rural communities that were kind of suffering and also bring the tourism, um, especially from uh, La Vallon de Point d'Arc um, and, uh, and uh, Les Grottes de Cheverny, which are in another side of the park and which generates a lot of tourism, to bring the tourists from that side of the park to the other side of the park um, through art and also create a new uh, re, um, image and cultural activity. So uh, the Grisel Forest Sculpture pro Program is very interesting because it was the first program of citing outdoor public art in the UK. And it was established in 1977, uh, primarily as a work environment for working sculptures. So this is a very important site for the research um, as its long history reflects some of the territorial changes that site civic art programs can bring about in rural areas. Um, so at Grisdale, um, artistic activity was introduced at a time uh, at a time, um, was introduced in the forest at a time when the forestry industry was changing and timber production was no longer the sole occupation. So the public was being allowed to the nation's forest for the first time and, um, and Grisa was one of the first places in which the idea of having recreation in forests and in natural settings um, was being developed. So the sculpture in the forest program was originally proposed uh, by Peter Davies, and uh, who was the visual arts officer in 1974. 
And so he was hired to develop and expand the visual arts offer in rural fragile areas in the northwest of England. And as cultural activities were already being developed at Grisdale, he saw this as an interesting place to go. Um, so the head forester at Grisdale at the time was sensitive to this idea of having art in rural areas. Um, he had visited the United States in the 60s and 70s um, and took many trips to national parks and saw that in these places they were doing cultural activities um, uh, to kind of animate the, the region. So he developed this idea of creating a theater in the forest and he brought this back to Grisdale. Uh, so Davies um, also spent some time in the U.S. teaching at the art school in Chicago and he was inspired by uh, an artworks program in which artists went to the school and did art projects with students at the school. And this was seen as kind of a win-win for both the artists and the students because um, this allowed the art artists to get their work out to the public sphere and then the students also learned something. So um, Davies wanted to create a similar idea at Grisdale. And um, the head forester at Grisdale was already sensitive to this idea of using culture um, to animate rural areas. So um, this is why the project was so successful. So what makes Grisdale very unique is that the is its long history and now the sculptures have become kind of part and parcel of the identity of the place and the natural environment. So uh, now we are going to just briefly look at the um, some of the specificities, specificities of each of the program and kind of develop the idea um, behind the artistic production of space. So the three themes that will be discussed, uh, motivation, mediation, perception, are all interrelated um, and will be addressed uh, from the ground up, starting with motivations and moving on to mediation perception. Um, so the typology of motivations proposed here is a way to organize the findings from the field work um, and think about how the initiators of the site um, and the extent to which there was a strong focus on art and the landscape kind of influenced the guiding motivations of the programs. So some of the major takeaways um, include the idea that programs initiated, initiated by a public body tend to use art to provide a broader public benefit uh, with motivations including rural regeneration and economic and social and territorial development. Uh, the motivations around programs initiated by individuals or private groups generally center around personal experiences and desire to engage with site specific art in the landscape. And so there are programs that seem to kind of lie at the intersection between public inter interpretation and enjoyment and territorial development. And as Sur la Santé des Lots, which is located in Ardèche as well, um, serves as a good example. It was started by one individual who wanted to create kind of a village life activity that would bring um, people together to not only reflect on the landscape, but participate and have a say in the development of the community. So these personal motivations were shared amongst um, a small association of people who want to use art as a way to animate their lives, uh, gain a certain amount of cultural autonomy, and inspire reflection about how the landscape is seen and used by different populations living in the same place. So all the projects looked at uh, here included some kind of territorial mediation technique. Um, techniques, which um, medi territorial mediation refers here to the process whereby certain tools are used to create ties between the public and the site. And so these techniques can include the art itself, uh, events such as conferences, guided walks, school visits, performances, and um, to create a typology. Uh, uh, so given the questions posed by this research of art and artists and shaping territorial dynamics, um, artist involvement and whether there was a strong or weak uh, focus on territorial mediation were seen as important. So uh, one of the major takeaways from the field work was that for territorial mediation to take place successfully, um, there was a critical element of time. Um, time spent on site for the artist to develop a more profound response to the surrounding environment, and also time for the program to establish a connection with the artist, the site, and the public. Um, when this process was rushed, Seemed that mediation was less successful. So this is very much demonstrated by uh, Grisdale. And uh, many of the artists at Grisdale cited that um, this uh, idea of an embedded residency period uh, was the most important element of the program. 
so this res residency generally lasted about six months and allowed the artists time to get to know the forest, the foresters, the people living and working in the local communities. Um, there were no planned events or activities around the artwork. Uh, there were also no formulas, guides, or requirements concerning the artist's interaction with the public. Um, they were just invited to come, live, and work on site. And any interaction with the public or foresters, foresters was very organic and just simply the result of um, everyday life events. Um, but this had very little impact on people's perception of the artwork. Uh, for example, um, uh, for example, one of the artists, Sally Matthews, who, interact probably, who interacted probably the least with the public, um, her pieces were repeatedly cited as favorites and in keeping with forests, um, with the forest and, and the landscape. Uh, so here are some uh, pictures. Uh, you can have some pictures from Grisdale and also um, on the far right one from Ardesh. So we'll move on to perceptions. Um, so uh, just very briefly, um, so this kind of just represents um, some of the overall perceptions and impressions people uh, may have to site specific art programs. Um, the x-axis -axis measures the degree of involvement with the project and the y-axis measures uh, general feelings about the programs. Um, so we've observed that those who had a higher degree of involvement uh, tended to have a stronger emotion towards the project um, and those with less uh, involvement weaker. Um, so I will not delve into each of the categories, um, but this raises kind of questions concerning um, how the public participates, perceives, and interacts with the artworks, uh, could extend to broader themes concerning attachment to place, um, spatial memory, and perceptions of change. Um, so as this art is something kind of out of the ordinary that's put into the landscape um, and could change people's day-to-day -day experiences, um, perceptions of these programs may kind of reflect how people respond to spatial and community changes. Um, here are some pictures as well. Um, so um, the next part uh, was trying to see what uh, site-specific art means for people um, and what makes an artwork or program feel site-specific. Uh, so this, um, again, uh, represents, um, so this is a spectrum. Um, and uh, and questions around site-specificity um, could kind of, um, help us understand what kind of culture, art, and territorial development are important for people who live in the area. Um, and um, it was a difficult question to answer, um, but we can see that uh, many people had kind of different definitions of site specificity. Um, so again, here are two other pictures, one from Grisdale um, and Sally Matthews' piece, and one from, um, well, both of these are from Grisdale. I'm going to skip over that because we're <laughs> kind of out of time, I think. Um, so uh, three kind of big uh, discussion points were raised by this research. Um, so this idea of um, art kind of being used as a way to um, as a way to kind of navigate uh, memory and spatial changes of places. Um, and people said that there was um, these art programs uh they were trying to kind of keep um the territory as it is um uh territory as it is and return it to where it's been abused and look for future development enhanced it, enhancement so where it gets a bit difficult is uh when commerce and preservation come into play um so yes yeah, so this idea of using art to um navigate uh memory and spatial changes um and um this kind of also, um, I'm actually going to skip over this one because we don't really have time. <laughs> and then uh, probably one of the biggest kind of takeaways was um, this idea of using art to play with space. Um, so at Grisdale, for example, people often spoke about childhood memories and recollections of searching for artworks and interaction with the artists. Um, they talk about this idea of using art to play with space, um, 
how an artwork might fit in with the landscape. Um, and it seems that uh, the more artists were allowed to play with space um, and the more freedom that was given during the exploratory period, the more uh, the public felt this sense of play as well. So many people when talking about the artworks, um, kind of uh, especially retired foresters at Grisdale talked about kind of the joy and surprise and excitement it brought them to um, to be working in the forest and then stumble upon an artwork that had not been there before. Um, there was kind of a lightness and a humor in the way that few people spoke about these early sculptures. Um, so I kind of even these small uh, little interactions and changes in the landscape, um, people hung on to these sometimes even 50 years later um, and had a uh, on people's feelings and kind of memories of spaces. Um, so in conclusion, um, uh, so um, territorial identity uh, along with the process of artistic creation is something which is constantly changing. And many people express this idea that because art provides this kind of non-scientific, unpredictable, more spiritual approach uh, to questions concerning territorial identity or relationship with the landscape, uh, it is interesting to, to explore. Okay. Thank you very much. It was very interesting and very vivid what you presented to us. Um, <laughs> Sorry for the rush. <laughs> yes, yeah, I realized that. No, 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 no. <laughs> and the, pictures, the pictures and everything there was, uh, it was really stimulating. Okay. And it gives us ideas, uh, if Constantinos is still online, it gives us ideas about our own case study in uh, Fragadona and how we could proceed some, uh, some programs. Mm -hmm.